Hello, this is North Star Runner. In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about my experience the past few years using Hal Higdon's plans and uh, more recently the Mathetone method. Uh, for an outline of Hal Higdon's plans, please visit his website. Um, I'll link that below. Uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, I strongly recommend his training plans, especially his novice marathon plan for those of you who might be running your first marathon. Um, over the years, I've progressed through all of his novice and intermediate plans, and after a couple of years using his Advanced 2 program, I finally qualified for Boston three years ago. Um, unfortunately, even though I qualified, I missed out the cutoff by about 20 seconds. So going into 2020, I actually wanted to try something else, something new, vary the training a little bit. Um, so um, I actually read up on the Mathetone method. Um, 2020 ended up being kind of a wash with all the races going virtual, so uh, that really didn't pan out, but, uh, but I picked it up again in 2021. And again, for more details on the Mathetone method, check his website and I'll link that below as well. Um, whereas the Hal Higdon plans focus on distance and pacing, the Mathetone method focuses more on heart rate. Um, you know, this actually makes it pretty good for those of you who don't want to worry about your pace too much. Um, and you, if you have a heart rate monitor, um, obviously that's a requirement for this method. Um, it, it, there might be something that you do rather do rather than worrying about uh, any pace or, or anything like that. Um, although if you're running your first marathon, um, I really encourage you not to worry about pace at all. But um, in either case, under the Maffetone method, the overwhelming majority of the runs are performed at a relatively low heart rate. Um, for me, this translated to keeping my heart rate below 140 beats per minute. For the first several months, I found that I had to reduce my pace by about a third um, in order to avoid any, any, having any spikes in my heart rate, uh, especially during the later stages of longer runs. I found that my heart rate just gradually increased. Um, even if I tried to keep it low, it, it just naturally increased, on the, especially on the longer runs. And towards the end, I often had a hard time uh, keeping it in that goal range, and I had to um, actually slow down a, a bit more. Um, but after coming off of a few years of using Hal Higdon's Advanced 2 programs, um, you know, those runs, honestly, they just felt excruciatingly slow at first. Um, so I was naturally skeptical that this would um, get me anywhere near that goal race time that I was uh, shooting for for grandmas. But early on, I decided I was just going to trust the plan, move forward, and, and just see, see how it works, really. And as the race drew closer, I started to see some significant benefits to that training method. Um, it, took, it did take several months, but I was able to gradually increase my pace while still keeping my heart rate below that 140 beats per minute mark. Um, Grandma's Marathon was, as I stated, my goal race, but I also signed up for a 50K, which was about six weeks before Grandma's. And um, while I didn't want to push myself too hard during that race, I didn't, um, I didn't want to treat it as a Mapitone type of run either. Um, I kind of wanted to, you know, get some race pace practice, but uh, still keep it relatively easy. Um, so I, I did monitor my heart rate, but um, a couple of times I, I, you know, I, I raced pretty hard and got out of that zone. A couple of times, actually, I even got it up to the uh, high 160s and, and even low 170s. Um, and that's actually what I noticed one of the benefits of, of using this Maffetode training method. Um, under other plans, it, took, it would just take a long time to get my heart rate back down again um, if I hit those spikes. And even if I slowed to a jog or, or even a walk for that matter, it would take several minutes and it would, my heart rate would quickly rise back up as soon as I resumed race pace. Um, but after using the Maffetone method, I noticed that it took less than a minute, really, of walking or jogging to get back to a reasonable heart rate. And uh, again, as I stated, since it was more of a, a training run, I made sure to back off quite a bit for the second half of that race, knowing that um, that I had at least um, at least I got about 25k of relatively hard effort in, and then the the second half I slowed down just to not burn myself out for grandmas. Um, but overall, that Maffetone method gave me great confidence um, that I was going to hit my goal rate in grandmas. Um, I figured I could walk the water stops and still have enough time built up to hit my goal as my heart rate would stay relatively low and uh, I could use those water breaks to recover a bit. And, and while this seemed to work for the first 17, 18 miles or so, um, I still noticed that my heart rate increased faster as the race progressed. Um, while it decreased rapidly during each water stop, it took less and less hard 
running to uh, to get the the to, for it to spike back up into that that high range. Um, so unfortunately, um, that that meant that I didn't didn't quite hit the goal. Um, just about the 20 mile mark. Um, it was yeah, it was probably about 20 mile mark. I realized that I was wasn't going to make the goal that I had um, sought out for, and I wasn't going to qualify for Boston. Um, it was still my ended up being my third best marathon time, um, but I was about 17 minutes short of, of a BQ time. Um, so a little disappointed in that, but uh, you can't be too disappointed with a you know third third best race. So. Um, Kind of went home and reflected on it a bit, and uh, reflected on the whole training s season and compared it to the past season. And I realized that um, there's certainly benefits to um, both Hal Higdon's plan, um, uh, especially his Advanced Two plan, if you're trying to qualify for Boston, and the Mafeto method. Um, the Mafeto method um, allowed me, as I mentioned, to greatly increase my training volume, um, and 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 speed up the recovery rates um, and actually it was the recovery um, that actually allowed me to increase the volume um, what I because I was recovering so quickly using this plan um, I actually ended up running a uh, starting a run streak something I had never really done before um, so for the first six months of the year um, I actually ran a 5k or at least a 5k I should say obviously I had several runs longer than that but um, ran at least a 5k every day for the first six months of the year and uh, never really got sore um, never got overly tired I think that's where that low heart rate training really really is beneficial if you're seeking to to do any kind of um, you know longer run streaks um, I think where it falls short is a lack of um, pace or tempo runs or even above tempo runs um, those are all key components of, of most other race strategies or, or training strategies and and we're definitely part of um, Hal Higdon's Advanced 2 program. Um, I think if you want to get consistently hit higher and higher PRs, I think you need to just build a little bit of speed work into your training plan. Um, so after thinking through that, um, that uh, I decided that was going to be my goal for this next year. Um, so I plan to create a kind of a hybrid of the two plans. I'll keep the speed work of the Hal Higdon's Advanced 2 program, um, but run the long runs and, and certainly the recovery runs with that low heart rate, um, you know, under 140, probably closer to 130, um, using kind of the, the parts of that Mafetone training program. Um, I'm hoping that this will help me adapt to the fast race pace while keeping the recovery benefits that I noticed this past year using the Mafetone method. Um, if I were just getting started running, uh, perhaps tra running for my, um, training for my first marathon, um, I think the Maffetone method would be an excellent plan. Uh, either Hal Higdon's beginner plan or the Maffetone method should get you to the finish line. Um, but I think it really comes down to um, which one you know you feel more comfortable with. Um, I think the Maffetone method's benefit um, with in terms of recovery time um, might might actually be even more beneficial for the uh, beginner runner. Um, but again, either plan will work, and you should ultimately choose whichever one you feel most comfortable with. Review them both and, and, and go from there. Um, I'll keep you posted as to how this next season goes with this hybrid approach once I formally start training. I plan to start that in February. Um, so prior to that, I'll share um, some details in, in terms of a schedule, distance, pace, and um, kind of lay out some of the a little bit more detail in terms of uh, the various runs and, and uh, the training schedule. So for now, please hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing to this channel for more running tips, tricks, reviews, and motivational thoughts. Now get out there and go for your next run. Thank you. Mm -hmm.